colleagues, hello. And we should do a, a cheers, festive seasons to you. Uh, whatever you may celebrate, whatever religious affiliation or lack thereof you have, cheers, happy holidays to you. I am so excited to be here. I could explode. And look, I will commence with an acknowledgement of country, acknowledging all the traditional owners on the lands on which we meet today, elders past, present and emerging, and any Indigenous colleagues with us today. Kylie, good morning. It is lovely to see your fabulousness. I hope you are well. <laughs> and uh, you're well, Kylie? Um, yes, can you hear me okay? I can hear your dull. <sighs> can't see. Perfect. But, but I've got his name in big frightening writing in front of me. <laughs> I, am I the only one? Is there a few more here? Oh, Actually? there's. there's we, we've got Party Central. Oh, fabulous. We've got That's what I for. <laughs> and, and colleagues have joined us from all over the world later yeah. early in the morning. We're doing well. So, colleagues, let's commence and welcome to the Whiteboard Soiree. We always promised that we would do this, but we sort of actually are now. So I'm excited to be with you. And I can see multiple people have got whiteboards and so forth. And Noma, good evening, Noma. We love Noma. Good evening, madam. And look, we're going to start with wherever you're at, okay? So there's this is just about support and care and love and nurture for people to wherever you're starting, let's move you somewhere else in the next 50 minutes. That's all we're doing. So there's no judgment, no metrics, no weird stuff, just you being fabulous and letting us help you get to where you want to be. So it's very important that I thank you for your time to be here today. And this is really a celebration of and for you. And good evening, Leslie. We've got Nottingham in the place as well. Dubbo, Nottingham. The glamour is astounding, can I say. So wherever you are in your career, whatever you think you should be doing, let's get the should out of the conversation and make it happen. Because done is better than perfect. And the rule for that is always in publishing, we start there. So let's plan for next year. Let's work together to help you. Now we've got some colleagues. If we can get some people, get the chat going as well, so we know where everybody is. Any Anybody enrolled in an undergraduate or graduate qualification like a master's, if you want to just whack your hand up or just wave or say, yeah. Fantastic, that's great. Toowoomba's in, the glamour's in, this is fantastic. So we've got people in graduate programs honours or, or capstone programs, that's great. We've got people in their PhDs, which is terrific. Hands up, people in their PhD program. Thank you, Kylie. Sarah's in. Woo, woo, woo. Good on you, Sarah. That's fantastic. And then we've got people, and this is the difficult period, colleagues, when you've just finished the PhD, and then what happens now? What do you do then? I can see I'm getting mad nodding there. So <laughs> what do you do then in the sort of postdoc space? And, and Elaine finished a year ago, so we're going to focus a lot of energy on our Elaine because my whole life revolves around Elaine, as you may have worked out. So we're going to talk a lot about that. And then we've probably got a lot of senior colleagues that post-COVID are trying to remember their own name. And this is just a way to refresh you all and for all of us to sort of think, well, this has been a hard year. Has anyone else had a really, really tough year this year? Anyone else really suffered? I know Jess and I are nodding at each other. It's like, yeah, yeah because Jess has me as a supervisor, so she has suffered. But it's been a really hard year. So the question for all of us colleagues is how together can we make this better? So we've all come in to really care for each other and help us learn from each other and do a better thing. So let's do it. We're doing this together. So team, let's get quickly to the process and then we're going to go granular. This whole session is about you. So what we're going to do now is work out where we're at. And if people can either comment in the chat or please demute because this is, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk. I want to hear from you. Tell me where you're at. So how this process goes is at its most basic. And some of you may be doing this right now. Get, get a bloody big bit of paper, put it on the desk. And here's a big texter. Love me a texter. And write ideas, things that you think you could write about or create a non-traditional research output. So really it is, you know, a freestyle event, writing down the vibe. And that's important. So if you're there, get your bit of paper out through the gig today, start to throw down ideas on that big bit of paper. That is fantastic. The second stage then is to get another big bit of paper 
and edit the first bit of paper. So then go, right, well, from these ideas and vibes, do some connect, so some are actually the same issue and I can connect them up. What is just nonsense and I need to do in five years or ten years' time, but or what's just more part that? What can we bring forward? And that master sheet, that next sheet, becomes the foundation for the whiteboard. And a lot of you I know have, have bought new whiteboards for this session today. Maeve, we may look at your gleaming whiteboard. Maeve, can we look at your new whiteboard? Have you got it in the room? Maeve, can we see your new whiteboard? I'm looking for Maeve. I'm looking for Maeve. Untouched. Um, oh, it's virginal. Uh, is, there, is there anything more exciting than a virginal whiteboard? I don't think so, Shay. I don't think so. I'm so excited I could explode. So Maeve's got, Maeve's ready to rumble. Oh, so Shay, what have you got? Is yours a bit tired and emotional or is yours a virginal whiteboard too? <laughs> Shay D, so it's virginal. Oh, this is just so exciting to me. Oh, so Shay, yes. so Shay yes. you've bought it. We're ready to go. I did, yes, just recently, yes. Ready to go. That's fantastic. So, Shay, have you found the process of sort of the scattergun ideas on a bit of paper and then editing? Where are you on the process so far? Are you just starting with the big bit of paper? Uh, no, I've got a fairly edited list, as I so I'm kind of ready to go. Oh, well, let's, let's, let's do this, Shay. So as you can see, Shay, what I then do from that edited list is here's mine, and normally I do mine about this time of the year. I've done it early for all of you. And there is my, I know it's all backwards for you. It's all, you're all saying it backwards. But there are three headings, team, and I do big lines across the whiteboard. And it starts with to be written, to be written at the top. So split it in three. Go on, Shay. Here's one I prepared earlier. Shay, you, you lead us forward with this. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's a great line. For, yeah, no, no pressure, Shay, doing, doing, doing live whiteboard either. How stressful. So Shay's doing it live. There are three lines here, and you've got three headings. To be written at the top, Shay. To be written. Then in the middle, under review. And then at the base, published or accepted. And who we got? Oh, not, and Noma will talk about publishing in multiple areas too. That's going to become important. So Shay's got this structure in place. That's terrific. Now, if any of you today have articles and things under review, and Jess certainly is moving into that area, if you've got objects, things under review, that's the first bit you actually fill in on this whiteboard. So if you've got some stuff that's currently under review, pop that in there so ironically the first area you fill in on the whiteboard is the middle bit now if some of you also you fabulous superstars have had stuff accepted that's coming out in january next year oh, yeah. then you can actually pop that in the bottom but for most people don't get panicked if going my whiteboard is empty oh look she's shay no pressure there she's shay's gone straight there and put under review that's gr how great is shay how great is shay those of you that are not seeing shay I hope you're looking at her footage. It's just, it's fantastic. It's not like you and I need to do um, a postmodern version of Mr. Squiggle, Shay. You and I need our own children's television. <laughs> we would do this so well. Yep. Thank, th thank you for that. So she's under review. Darling, have you got anything that looks like it's coming out next year? Have you got anything accepted? Um, yes, I've got a um, one article that's accepted that will be coming out. And I've got another one that just came back for that's asked for revisions. Right. So let's let's work with Shay on that. So the one that's been accepted, bang, bang, thanks for playing. Put that in the bottom section. That's yep. fantastic. Yep. Okay. And the one that's bouncing around reviewer two. Yeah. Stays, stays in the under review. Yeah. Right. And so what we're trying to do, and then so at that point, well done. Well done. Uh, is to be written split into two columns? Uh, that's a question from Jess. Jess, mine is because I'm going to try and destroy my own life and that of my students next year. So I, I have a fair amount that I have to get done and get finished. So I've put a line down the middle of it. You, you don't have to because you're young and you've got so much life ahead of you, young Skywalker, whereas we're close to death. So I've got to do it now or else it's just over, right? So yeah, if you don't have to put a line down the middle, don't, don't, you don't, <laughs> don't. So how's that going, Shay? So you've got two of the two of the sections already populated. 
we need to say, Shay, that for most of the people on this call, you will have nothingness. And so don't go, nothingness, I am worthless. We're, we're starting where you are. So if you're going, I've never published an article before and this is my year, how many people are in that position where they were actually just having their first go? And you, oh, that's fantastic. Got an Ukraine, oh, it's fantastic. Good one, Alison. So don't be panicked by uh, Shay. Shay is here to put peer pressure on all of us. So don't don't allow that to occur. So Alison, what we need to do for you is have those three sections and know that at this juncture they are empty. Okay. So what we're then going to do, and this is important for Alison, is your section. You're going to be top heavy. You're going to be top heavy, and that's great. So all the stuff that's come off your edited piece of paper you now list in the to be written at the top and the other two sections nothing there yet and that's great because what you're about to see Alison is going to be transformative because the the full cascade you're going to I see. hope so <laughs> Let's talk about it for a second if you can Alison so you fill up the top story like this and then like a waterfall it comes down right cascading down <laughs> and so it's I actually got one accepted on the weekend and I, as you can see, I scrubbed it out of this space, hold on, scrubbed it out of that space and put it down there. And it's a feeling. I just, I get, I, I mean, I'm so old and I'm so close to death, Alison. And yet when I was scrubbing this out, it's like, oh, my goodness, I'll be doing this since 1993. I'm still excited with the white border razor, right? So this is where you're at. So let's stay with you for a second. So we're at the top. Now, how, what's your plan for the year? What, what are you putting up there, Alison? Well, I'm actually, um, I am writing my first article as we speak with my previous, not my previous, with my um, PhD supervisor as well. So um, I'm hoping to get draft one sent to him for him to have a look at um, by sort of mid-January. But it's the first time I've done it. So I sometimes, you know, I'm looking at articles from the, um, you know, from where it is that we're going to be sending it. And I'm, I'm, but it's all new. I feel, I felt more comfortable writing a PhD than I do about writing an article because it's so unknown to me, the style, the everything about it. So I'm giving it my very best shot. Um, but um, yeah, I've got one on the back hob, so to speak. <laughs> Darling, that's terrific. And, and don't judge yourself. Articles are a genre, okay? A PhD is a genre too, and you've got mastery of that, and that's terrific. So we learn to write articles by writing, and what no one tells you is there's 50 different subgenres of articles. We have this notion from particular versions of empirical science that these headings are what you do. That's not the case. There are so many different types yeah. of articles. So you've got the one that you're going to pop up there. Have you got ideas for other ones? Well, I think I have. I mean, I, I loved my PhD. I absolutely loved it. And I love the area that I'm researching in, which is the same area as Elaine, I remember, mm. um, critical social class. And, you know, I, my PhD, I just submerged myself in it for six years and I got some superb examiner reports back with you know corrections that took me 10 seconds um and i know and both of them said you need to you know use this and, and you need to do some publications from this it's excellent and um i stopped i think i lost my confidence um is what happened i did my phd and i'm an introvert extrovert so i was great doing my phd and then suddenly i got these you know these examiner's reports back with that I couldn't have even hoped for and I had a really shit year at work and it just knocked me so I, I, I've not I've done nothing well we're here for you absolutely now so look what I would advise if you can have you got a are you repulsed by your PhD sorry are, say are, again are, are you repulsed by your PhD so you absolutely can't... not no really okay. no I'm That's not a... But some people are traumatised by their No, no trauma. And so even when I'm engaging with it, looking, because obviously I'm using bits of that for this article. Yes. It's actually made me feel really um, alive again when, I, when I'm doing this article and I'm thinking, actually, I'm loving every bit of this. Right. So there's no, re no repulsion. <laughs> right. So that's great. So what I think we should need to do, this is fantastic. So what I would do now is I would go through that thesis and do the low-hanging fruit stuff, Alison. So go, right. 
Now, what chapter could become an article? They're the, always the easiest ones and just go one for one, thanks for playing, send it out, right? If there's one, you can cut it in half and make it two, that's great. But so look at it with fresh eyes. In some ways, the gap is a blessing. I've always said that we are where we need to be, right? We are where we need to be. Don't overjudge us. We are where we need to be. And, and so therefore now, with fresh eyes, look at it, be excited and populate the first third of the whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is exciting. Exactly. that. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, let's let's do it on the way through. And wonderful, Sophia, how are you? Oh, you, you look, I'm loving that bookcase. Come and say hello to us. Hi. Hey, I'm much better for seeing you, Tara. Thank you so much for hosting this event. Um, I was watching your, your YouTube video on your um, whiteboard process just in preparation for today. And I had a question. I hope it doesn't throw a spanner in the works. But oh, I'm not, um, I've, I've sort of done my intro and now it's you, so talk to me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so your advice that you just repeated about um, sort of mining your thesis for journal article ideas, I just wondered how you balance that with um, sort of the aspiration of turning the thesis into a book. Yes. Is there a risk of publishing too much from it um, and then sort of losing your ability to publish it as a monograph? Really great point. And Sophia, can I ask you, what's your, what's your area, what's your research field? And that will determine how I funnel that answer. Uh, yes, so I'm uh, a kind of weird interdisciplinary um, person, but um, basically between Japanese kind of cultural studies and um, media and childhood studies. Oh, that's huge. Now, that's important. So that is book ready. That is book ready. And so you're absolutely right to go, right, this is a monograph. This is slightly not not more, more difficult, more exciting in some ways, because what you need to do is have that go through and do your monograph sweep of the thesis. And by that, I mean, make sure that you've got a singular arc of an argument, okay? So go through, aim for, and you've got multiple options, Sophia, so we're going to talk about that. When you're saying a book, some of the most uh, highly cited areas at the moment are the short books of about 30 to 35,000 words, particularly for Springer and Emerald that I'd recommend and I've used them. They have high sites, they cannibalize those books so the individual chapters have site lives of their own. So depending on your thesis, I'd get at least a short book out of it. Well, I'd go for that, cut out at least a short book. And then of course that leaves you three, four, five articles that are then available. If you think it is a, 60 to 70,000 word scholarly monograph. That's great too, Sophia, do that. Uh, and then note when you're cutting out, be judicious with the thousand words out, thousand words out, thousand words out of the chapters, because each of those can be a little seed for a new article. So th that's a tougher edit, but I think it's worth worth doing that. But uh, considering the time frame around getting the shorter books out, and we're talking it can be two or three months and noting your career, which we might talk about in a second, maybe getting the short book out and four or five articles with it, book five articles might be what we're aiming for for you. And cultural studies, a lot of the really innovative cultural studies at the moment is happening through these shorter books that are moving at speed. Now, Sophia, is that helpful? So I think short book, four or five articles. What do you think? No, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Tara. And Sophia, if you want me to introduce you to the Springer editors that do the short ones or Emerald or introduce you to those editors, very, very happy to do that. Send me any email you feel like. Let's so you're not on your own. Let's let's make sure that interface is working for you. Thank you so much. Oh, that's fantastic. How good is Sophia? Now, where are we? Where are we, people? Who who wants to have a go next? Should I be? Oh, the chat's gone bonkers. Jess, are you running the chat? Are you? That's fantastic. Fantastic. Jess, do you want to say hello? Hello. Jess, you help, yeah. Hello. So I guess I can just go crazy, obviously, and make a huge list and fill up my two columns. But I know that <laughs> I know I won't have time to do it all and then it'll just stay as a list and so I guess I'm just sort of questioning like should I prioritize it and if I do how should I do I just get out the most important publications or do I just go for the easiest but yeah. then if I do that I might not get out the work that I think is most important like how to kind of figure yeah. that out and 
almost always in our relationship, Jess, um, we have very different personality types, as you may work at. I'm, I'm sort of a groovy Gen X, and, and Jess is a very, very tight perfectionist. And so we, we have a great relationship. No, I'm joking. She's an absolute legend. But Jess, what I would do is it's not either or. So I would list everything. I'll tell you why in a second. I would list everything, and you can have your two columns, oh, perfection, perfectionist that you are. But what I would do is done is better than perfect. So I would aim to get, particularly at the start of your next year, three easy ones out. So three of the ones that are the closest to your changed chapter, the article, in out, shave it all about, send them out. So I get three out because we've got to get the we've got to get the momentum happening on your career. And if people can't read your work, they can't hire you. So get the three easy ones out. So then you've got three. That's great. Then I would focus on two, five in a year is tremendous, two high quality, high journal, if you like, in the big punchy areas, right? So then you've got five. Now, once you've got five, that's a great year. And then we go again to the list. But if you do have your two columns, remember, you will not be dead in the next 12 months. You and I will be having a whiteboard meeting this time next year, okay? And if there are elements from your two columns that you have yet to begin, they remain on the whiteboard and they trickle on down. You with me? So it's not like they're on the whiteboard. We have to empty the whiteboard this year. There may be three years of work there, but isn't it better that it's there and you can plan than not have it there and forget that these fantastic publications are available? What do you think, Jess? Talk to me. I guess, yeah. So I guess I get the momentum thing and... I guess it depends where you're at. So like I've published before, I, you know, I'm reasonably confident in publishing in my kind of area and sticking in my <laughs> empirical kind of process. So for me, the stuff that would take longer is if I was to like really stretch and try and publish, you know, something in a sociology journal or something like that. Um, or if I wanted to do more solo author, those are the things that would take longer and they're unfamiliar to me. Um, so I guess that's how I would perhaps put them on the back burner and do the easier ones first that are in my comfort zone. Um, but then what about data and things getting old and it being harder to publish? Like I feel like some stuff, if you leave it till the next year, it probably isn't going to get accepted anymore um, or we've missed the wave of momentum on that particular thing. You so, are absolutely right. No, and all of that is correct, Jess. And I think, but again, you're only one human being, right? So what I need you to do for me is let's have a, fill out the whiteboard, then give yourself a, a target of five, three data heavy, timely, easy ones, and two more of a stretch, let's use the stretch target, two more of a stretch target. And why that matters for you, Jess, is you and I disagree about your future, and obviously that's not a surprise, but I think a lot of your uh, public health funding is going to come in and through sociology. So I think those two stretch targets, particularly working with regionality and regional development, Sarah Casey 101, they're going to be important to you. So I think you need to know that your career is going to have at least two tentacles, and we need to publish in both, but that's very savvy of you to realise that those two elements are there and publish in both, but you must get stuff out next year because if it's sitting on your hard drive, if reviewer two is just going, nah, 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 no one can hire you because they can't read your work. Yeah. So plan for where you want to be and prioritize those. Become the person that you dream of. Yes. No, do that. And just do that. Do that. Um, you're, you're a rock star. Can we go to the wonderful Corrine who is, in the middle of the afternoon, how are you going, girl? You're writing like a lunatic. I just want everyone to see your pink scarf mainly. But how are you going? Because your career, you've got multiple languages going on, all sorts of things going on. So, Corinne, where are you on this process? I am. Um, thank you very much to, for doing this and for inviting me to talk. Um, I am uh, in the middle of um, deciding what is uh, the most uh, urgent thing to write because i have a long list i have uh, a couple of things that are going to be out but not in a scientific journal yes 
And uh, that is giving me motivation to do a little bit more. And I finished a course where I wrote an article in English for the first time in my life. So it's funny that actually I wrote the article in English instead of French. And I, that, that was really unexpected. So I, I did pass the class. So I have all the, in, the credits that I need for my PhD. So now I need to write the dissertation itself. Yes. And I have submitted one article in French also, and I'm waiting uh, for the answer. So it's going, it's going. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. So as I've always said, when I'm talking with PhD students, you so, it's so far beyond that, Karim, but, but keep the publications clustered in the thesis. So if you are publishing during the PhD, don't destroy your life. Keep everything as clustered as you can. You might get an outlier, so you might get an interesting, you know, request to do a, a seminar. Do it and write that up. But mostly keep things as nested as you can. Yes, it's very difficult to do that, but I understand that it's important. Yes. Yeah. And then also you do get known, particularly your area, you're branding a whole new area, a whole new term. So I would really keep, keep folks in getting that term out into the universe because it, that's what you're going to be known for. Yes, thank you very much, Tara. You know, I think of you a lot because I use your knowledge sometimes and uh, it's like uh, very uh, practical and uh, it works for me in between two cultures and uh, also regarding, you know, the my topic. Um, and um, I am also, uh, I have to write a pitch for a university for a project so that so I have several things that are not really included into the dissertation itself yeah. but it's 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 spread in a different way so I think it's because I am at the end of the research I think so too but don't don't waste those opportunities as you've said following on from Jess if you've got something that you know what you probably can't write up this year still put it on the whiteboard because in some ways yeah. you've created a parking spot you go oh look I'll just park that and I'll get to it no Construct a parking spot, label what the parking spot is and park it, noting that it might be, might be migrated to next year. Yes. Good on you, Corinne. Sh should we talk to the hero that is Vicky? I've just seen Vicky's comment. Vicky, do we all just, where are you, Vicky? Can you just, can we see your fabulousness? I'm here. Can we all just do this for Vicky first? If anyone's reading the comment, so I used the whiteboard for the first time and had a big blank box at the bottom until recently. Using the whiteboard kept me focused until I got three papers published at the end of November. Oh, thanks to all your methods. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, tell us about it because I'm just some random, I'm just some, you know, 53 year old idiot. I mean, I'm from Western Australia, who, who knows, who cares? But it, it, I've used it since 1993 for me, and then I've overshared it. So, Vicky, tell us about the process last year when things weren't cascading and you had to hold on. Oh, well, I'm a 52-year-old distance learning part-time student and all the other things, PhD. Um, if you look so, good, I look like I've, I've lived on the back of a truck for my life. You look fantastic. So, Vicky, <laughs> tell us about last year or this year. Um, I work in an area that doesn't have much... Um, literature out there really in tertiary education in the vocational sector so some of it is to do with stuff I've worked in for 15-20 years and I was a bit cross there were no papers out there so I used the skills that I've learned in my master's and the beginnings of my PhD and the whiteboard to put it all down on there and I work in mind maps a lot of the time because I'm dyslexic and mind maps are fantastic so having it confined to the top section controlled it and it didn't get overexcited for me. So it was connected. I wrote down all the ideas and all the areas that I've worked for. Um, and then I picked out the ones that I, when I listened to you, I could work those out into papers. Plus, um, I was working with a really fantastic supervisor who put a group of us together. So we co-wrote a paper on positionality, which was just fantastic. None of us, I'd, maybe one person had done that before, but I certainly hadn't. So it was all new, um, but the whiteboard kept it all regulated for me and I could walk past it every day and see it and just think, no, no, it's okay. It's under review, we're down here. And, and then it suddenly arrived at the bottom about three weeks ago. So thank you. But, but Vicky, you've changed my life because that's a great example of 
is something happening? Is something happening? You sort of feel like you're a bit constipated, intellectually <laughs> constipated. We want movement and like, you know, we need a bit of move call. And so what happened with you is sort of we got intellectually some move call about November, right? And then all of a sudden, and it's funny, Vicky, you remind me of this, when I was a, a, a humble, younger person, there was a lot of intellectual constipation there. I had a lot out and nothing was really getting published. And then all of a sudden it's like, a light switch came on. I remember this feeling, I suppose it was about at your point in the PhD, where and suddenly, like the dams did burst and all this publishing suddenly appeared. I think it means, what it often means, Vic, is that you're ahead of where academic life is. And because you're ahead, the journals have to catch up with you a bit. Oh, okay. I'll bear that in mind for next year. <laughs> oh, you, well, congratulations. We're all so excited. Can you see everyone smiling at you about how thrilled they are for you? That is fantastic. Oh, brilliant. And so, Vicky, just to help Jess, uh, so there's things on your whiteboard at the top that you haven't written yet that you're now going to move to the next whiteboard? Yep, I've, I wiped it off yesterday and I took photographs so I didn't forget. Wiped it off, started again, and I've got, yeah, about a dozen ideas down there. And I'm trying to, like you just said, confine it to really my PhD. There's a couple of specialist areas in my work that I want to focus on to do with neurodivergence, but on the whole, I'm trying to contain it to global citizenship because that's fast moving thing that I'm involved in with my PhD. That's tremendous. So Jess, I hope you can see Jess writing there. Jess has taken note of that, the fast moving field you're prioritizing. Mm. I think that's brilliant. If colleagues are comfortable, I mean, obviously people whack hands up and also having a vert conversation I really really desperately want that but could I go to Anne McLeod and can you, I know you could you just demute Anne because because firstly we all need to congratulate you on your promotion that happened today do you want to just speak to that firstly oh and look it's uh there's two things I'm so at the moment I for, for the time being I'm acting associate head of school for workplace learning and partnerships as well as I've put an application in to be co-course director for K-12 degree so it's it's yeah it's it's really an exciting time, and I'm involved with five different projects that have happened this year, and what I'm looking at is and this is a, a situation. So I've got these projects that I'm working on that will actually have some writing in, like that will obviously give results. Yes. But right now they haven't got results, but I still have like I've presented at three different conferences this year that have got papers from that. Yes. Um. But they're not Q1, Q2 journal articles. And they're, that, that's, from, I guess, where I am at this point in time is that push of that Q1, Q2. Yeah, and, and look all the way. And look, and a couple of things you're going to say about that. Firstly, you've got these big new jobs, and you know, mm -hmm. your life has been colonized. You've got a wonderful family, you've got a wonderful husband, and th these things occupy time. So the priority for you is to get the work out. Now, this mm -hmm. is the point about balance. Now, so are they are they in EC educational leadership? Where are we in? What so uh, <clears throat> some of them are in professionalism and wellbeing. Nice, nice. Professional and wellbeing. The other one is actually I'm doing a national research project on the costing of work integrated learning at universities. Ooh. So I'm working and uh, I'm leading that for, with in NAFIA. Mm. Um, and I'm also uh, a, it's an early childhood one. Um, based around uh, looking at how we can actually have what's known as a prac swap for integrating placements be paid for placements in early childhood network. So that's very, very much AC based, based and looking at that implication for, 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 for the profession. See, and I'm so interested in that. The reason I asked that is early childhood uh, journals, I would argue their ranking is very, just very frozen. Some, some disciplines, some disciplines, hopefully people are still with me. I hope I'm, I made this moving right. So, and this will be recorded. So, if you come back to us in Dubbo time, I'll I'll make sure you get this. But so, and what's important is in early childhood and some other disciplines like law, the ranking of journals is somewhat inelegant. New fields, uh, vet is another great one. For example, vocational educational training, the ranking of journals is is not great. What I would do. I would go to the directory of open access journals and I would click the button that says no author processing fees and I would publish in those journals. But then what you've just got to do, if you haven't quite got the e posh ranking with the journal, you have to work harder. So use Twitter, use Facebook, 
use LinkedIn and make sure people have the awareness of the article because the key is awareness, impact and engagement, yeah, but also build the citations up. So for me, and we've got a backlog and what we need to do is we need to clear that backlog so you can get the, get the movement on the whiteboard, right? That's right. So I would be going for open access, no author publishing fees, and then we'll all work hard to support you to get those journals out and about. High okay. quality peer review, all the rest of it, but let's get them out and let's work hard to give them an audience, all right? Yeah. Cool. Oh, you're the best, Anne. Fantastic. No, professionalism and wellbeing should be published, hopefully, Shay. We, we, it actually was submitted at the end of this year. Um, it was yeah. a co-published from based on our Aubrey Hub work, actually, Tara. I'm really impressed by that. Of course, the wellbeing stuff, the moment there are certain words, and I talk about this with Jess a lot, there are certain words. I use COVID-19 studies a lot in my recent keywords, but can I say well-being? Exactly. Goodness, that's a keyword. You don't need the posh end of town journal. The keyword will sell it. Mm. And that's really important yeah, to sell it out there. Thanks for that. Really you're, appreciate that. You're, you're, you're dropping out past. Don't worry. It's the nature of no. W. It's, it's regional Australia. It's the vibe. But you're doing really, really well, Anne. And can we all just acknowledge Anne moving through different roles and the challenges of moving into those leadership posts while keeping research going. So we're terribly proud of you, Anne. And, and they've actually shock horrid. They've given me one day of research per week. And I, I negotiated. I negotiated. I said, I'm not going to give this up. I enhanced the, the TB <laughs> and said, yes. I'm, not, I'm not giving it up. And, and uh, so yeah. make that day count. Work the whiteboard. Yep, work. That's exactly. You're the best, Anne. You're fantastic. Love you. Let, let, let's okay. go to Camilla, who's got the fantastic hand up. Camilla, I'm excited. Middle of the night for you, darling. So what can we do to help? Yeah, I have two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, um, um, it is about the thing that you said before, that the publication should be uh, nested in your PhD research. And so if you can say something about um, something more about that, because it's not clear to me. And the second question is, is related, uh, and it is a sort of problem that I have, if we can call it like that, that I do have a lot of ideas uh, outside my PhD research, but yes. that in some way are related to that because I read a lot and different stuff. So I put together, you know, different ideas and um, different kinds kind of things. So um, yeah, how to make it work, you know, the, the PhD and I guess from what I can understand, um, publications that are nested in your research, but publication that are not related to to that as well i don't know i hope it, it makes sense <laughs> well darling it does and again you, you and jess probably met each other in a previous life that you're both you know high achieving very demanding of yourselves and everything needs to happen now success 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 push forward you're fantastic wouldn't trade you for which but camilla the challenge you've got with the the nesting of the phd i'll sort of explain what i mean so you're writing you're doing your phd research and you do need to publish from that research. So keep everything bounded and together. And that includes trying to keep your presentations, your seminar presentations, your conference presentations, your journalism, your nitros, your non-traditional research objects, keep everything together. And you're doing that for two reasons. Firstly, you need to finish the PhD as quickly as you can. You're competing with the world. So if you've got outlier topics, which are terrific, but the outlier topics will not increase the speed at which you finish the PhD. So keep everything clustered. That's why we keep it that way. But secondly, you spent all this time doing this PhD research. You need to be known for it. It is your first branding, your first lens to be able to get work where the consultancies inside and outside of a university. So we need you to make sure that you very much got those ideas out in a public forum, just like we've talked about with Anne, right? So that's why that's important. Firstly, it helps you finish the PhD quickly. Secondly, you get known for that research area, okay? And your second point about ideas outside of the PhD, don't lose them. Don't lose them. Put them on the whiteboard. Create a parking space. So if, if like Jess, you want two columns, 
then what you could do is have two columns and one is the PhD nested publications and the other is the outliers that are important will lead to your next career and are there if you get time, okay? Or if you get an opportunity to speak on one of those topics, you've written the text, well, you know what, finish it, write it up for an article, yeah? And therefore you've, you've got both because, Camilla, you've been very wise. The PhD is everything until it's not. And what I mean by that is when you go into an interview, like a, a North American academic interview, which I've done, you'll always get a question like, what's your second book? And the reason they're asking you that question is they're assuming the PhD is the first book. We know that. What's next? So Camilla and Jess, you're great on the what's next. And don't think that's not important, but finishing the PhD quickly is dead crucial. Now, Camilla, have I answered your questions a bit? Yeah, absolutely. And you just kind of uh, uh, get um, got the point, yeah, about me and the way that I think, you know, I really do go next, 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 next. Yeah, so thank you so much. Well, Camilla, you keep in touch with us for the rest of your life. And can I say, I have supervised a few fabulous students like you, uh, and they go on to fabulousness. So, do, you know, I'll, I'll quote, um, I'll quote, is it Billy Joel? I'll quote Billy Joel, don't go change it, don't go change it. Just all we'll do is just get you a bit organised, all right? Just cr create. So, Jess, we've come up with a reason to split the top white. What are you comfortable with what I've just advised, Camilla, there, Jess? Oh, just get a nod. Oh, thanks very much. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Oh, my God. Right, Jess, speak so at least the camera can see what you've held up. Jess, speak because it's Zoom. Yes, and I have columns. Hold this Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So, Camilla, I think that'll work nicely for the pair of you. The nested in the thesis, the next stage. That is fantastic. Now, I, I saw the light of our lives. Liam, I think, had his hand up. Liam, how are you? Wonderful, Liam. Can you... Hello. Where... Sorry, is the microphone working? It, it so is, and can I say that has changed my life so good evening it's 12 30 uh a.m is it liam it's quarter past 11 quarter over the evening 11. well you am... so that was a good jumper choice mate thank and... you I'm, I'm not feeling it so i'm i made a comment in the in the chat because i didn't know whether my microphone would work about i'm literally i've got my virtual board on the train i'm having to do a majority of my writing in my first post, post PhD on the train, yes. I am to Keel University, and it's an interesting conundrum. I'm trying to fit research writing in. I'm on top of a full time academic job, um, so it's I'm just kind of like help. Yes. <laughs> I'm at the moment. I'm writing an article, which is the first one out of the PhD on yes. critical social policy. Um, and it's very, very nearly there. It's just I'm sitting on the abstract at the moment. Um, I'm hoping to present the paper in some form at the ISA, so that's the International Psychological Association in yes. Melbourne, hopefully soon in June 2023. Um, but I don't know if I submit the paper first or if I'll present it at the conference get feedback and then run with it. Right, now I'm going to ask you this question. So you and I are going to have a time here, right? Okay. Now, the, this, what you're writing up was in the thesis? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. And so we know what was in your thesis did incredibly well because of how well you move through examination. So we know it's already of quality. We don't require a conference presentation to confirm that it is of quality. So what I would do, Liam, is I would write this up, I would write it up quickly, and I would get it out quickly. So when you come to speak with us in Melbourne, and I'll certainly be in that crowd cheering for you, you can actually talk to the piece that has been published, which will pick up the citations. And also, as a great a great presentation you can do when you speak to a paper, which actually leads you to your next publication. You with me? So in other words, here's this research, and this is where I think it's going. And so what you present is the next stage. So if you were worried, if it hadn't been in the PhD and quality might have been an issue, I'd say, brother, go again, 
test it out, you know, walk the suit around, as I say, walk the suit around, see if, it, if it's going to work. We know this is of research quality, so don't waste a second. Keep writing and get it out and then use the seminar to spruik how fantastic you are. Right, yeah, that's clarified a lot. Um, it's just, it's nearly done. It's literally like, it's at like, it's teetering on 7,000 words. So I just need to write the conclusion. It's nearly there. I think I need another train journey. Yeah. Um, and Liam, can I just say, as and as you know, for our colleagues, not in the United Kingdom, I've lived in England for, for 10 years. And of course, we didn't have a car either, Liam. We didn't have a car. And, and so we got trains everywhere. And, you know, trains are fantastic. If I didn't have to have a car, I wouldn't now. But Australia and New Zealand are, are different. But can I say I wrote two books and 15 articles yeah. completely on the train, right? And I used to give myself a job. The book Digital Wine, some of you may know I wrote a book with the legendary, the late, great Mick Winter and Bryn Gandy. And, and I used to just have the train trip um, from Bolton to Manchester Airport station, right? So I just used to have that theory, which is about 40 minutes. And I used to, every Friday, work on that book on that train. So mentally, Liam, if you can associate the train trip, get yourself organised and plan what you're going to write on the train before you get on the train. So have it up, have it ready to go. Don't waste a second and just go full throttle and write it and your brain will start to associate that train trip with writing and when that happens you you write incredibly quickly so you can do it and we're with you and it's a it's a great weird place to write it, it is it is like the friday train journey has become when it's not too crowded it's become my friend or if it's not on strike yeah it's it's a friend well can, can i say friday trains are always fun aren't they <laughs> it's, it's all oh, thank you Tara oh Liam darling we would do anything for you and sweet send anything you like to me and by the way I don't know if Alyssa or the wonderful Aidan are on the call we, we are emailing you shortly with a request if you'd like to produce a couple of articles in a four way for a book so you might be about oh. something on the whiteboard from us hashtag no pressure have you got my latest email? I'll send you it. I'll send you it. I, oh, yeah. I, I, hope, I have stalked you, Liam. I know that will come as a surprise to you, but you're, you're, you're never getting away from us. You're a member of my family, so just so long as you know that, all right? I'm, I'm Maeve too. Maeve, Maeve and, I can see Maeve. <laughs> no, and we're going straight to the other member of the family now. And colleagues, please put your hand up because we're in sort of the final 10 minutes now. But I wanted to make sure Maeve was in this conversation because we may have some creative crew in that are producing artifacts and exegesis, you know, the people producing creative works, photography, sound, those sort of objects as well, and how do they publish? So, May, where are you on the whiteboard? So your virginal whiteboard, where, where are we now? What's happening with your structure? Well, um, I listened to a bit of the vlog um, that you put up alongside this invitation, and which I have listened to before, but not for a while. And I've, I've actually got stuff from my masters that um, I need to get out because I never tried to get that out. And I sort of um, uh, stopped my, like I've having, I've got an article out, as you know, and um, my question, I have a question about that, which is that when we come to do that, maybe this is for not for now, but I'll just um, yeah. mention it. Um, is there a way we're going to link that in so that it is part of chapter one or I don't know I'll, I'll leave that to you to let no, me know no that's a really good point so say if you and May this is brilliant say you have written an article that is ahead of the thesis right every now and again that happens colleagues so in other words you think it's going to be in the thesis but it was clearly an article first very common can i say in med in medical sciences some experimental sciences the article precedes the chapter so the best way to handle it made after you've published that great piece of work is you unpick it like a dress so you could slam it into the thesis but mostly that doesn't work and it looks inelegant and examiners just go well it's an article this is a thesis they're different so what i advise we do Maeve, is we unpick it paragraph at a time 
put the paragraphs on the floor and work out where it where it sits okay. in the thesis. But I think okay. that's the point. That's really really important. Okay, that's really helpful. I've got that down. Um, so I I made a list this morning. Um, of the things that I did in the masters. Uh, there's a short story from the masters that I've been holding back. Um, I think I was waiting to see if they would publish as a group of short stories on the seventies. Yes. Um, so that's still, that's why I was holding that back. Um, yes. And also I wanted to be sure at the time, I don't know, I think, I think my journey with publishing aside from the article where it was you and I working and, and uh, you know, as feeding off idea uh, work you and I were thinking about. Um, I think mostly in life I've been holding back my work that could be published, and there's a long trail of it and thousands of things in 500 word chunks, yep. and academically and um, creatively. And I think actually I've got a huge amount of work all in drives and folders and more yep. folders and um maybe there's sort of no reasons left to be hesitating or um not quite doing that and that's perhaps the biggest thing i'm getting from today um and i'm also very keen you know my work better than anyone so i'm wondering do you obviously i know it better than you do everyone else except me um but i'm wondering you know do you have any idea of something in particular because i would be prepared to do one one main publication for 2023 yes um, look what i would do is i would absolutely use what you already have mate so with those 500 sni word snippets they're crucial. So I would say is there anything there that's almost self-contained there are that many flash fiction journals around at the moment i cannot and i i love them i read it for for people flash fiction is the way forward so if you've got these little vignettes as such we use the old-fashioned word go for flash fiction but what i would do if you've got the components from your masters look at what is close to complete so what yep. you need to do is low-hanging fruit what with a little bit of effort remember you've got a supervisor who's very happy to add the add the third add a, add a bit to it if you think there's something there or thereabouts that's where you send it to me and we get it out. It's of no use to the planet if it's sitting no. on your hard drive. No, I agree. All right. And I think I've done too. I think that in a way like the past has caught up with me where I don't have any reasons left to be not doing that. So really that's the low hanging fruit for me. That's the amount of work I've already done over years and years. Yeah, I mean, colleagues, can we all make a decision as a family today? And I will hold you to it. No more excuses. It's over. It's over. You are so magnificent and fabulous. We need to share your fabulousness with the word world. There's so many weird people out there doing this, doing a vibe. The bright people of the planet, which are you. We need you and we need your words in public. Okay. You rock, yeah. mate. Brilliant. Well done for getting us there. Two people I'd like to finish with, if I can. Uh, look, I've seen Shay. Is anyone else sort of seriously inspired by Shay, who's been continuing during the gig to get that going on? And look, I would like to finish with Ella, if I can, at the end, because she's obviously the reason we're doing this gig today. Shay, what's been happening? Give us a ball by ball report, Shay. I've written I've written a list of a whole lot of articles that I can pull out of my thesis. And I've I've put them uh, based on the amount of energy that I have on them, feeling like they're the ones that have the most uh, brain coherence at the moment. So they might be the easiest and then down to the more challenging ones. And I've got a bit of a research project over there and a book list. That is fantastic. There it is. And that's happening less than an hour before our eyes, Shay. It's very, it's very pie in the sky, but here we go. Well, the world deserves you and the world deserves your fabulousness. You've changed my life, honestly. I, you have enhanced my life so much, Shay, I can't tell you. So let's let's have you enhance the rest of the planet. You are a legend. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, mate. And look, we'll finish off for our last two minutes. The reason we did this gig 
is a wonderful human being who I met called Ella. Ella, please D Mike. Ella uh, wrote to me and said, look, what's going on? How do I start publishing? What do I do? And I love Ella like life itself. And so really so many of the, the posts that were the post, the new video series uh, and this session today come from Ella and Ella's inspiration. So Ella, do you want to just say hello and say how it's going, darling? Have we helped you? Yes. Uh, thank you all so much for just watching the different ways you're handling problems. Jessica, if you want to give me your email, I can pretend to be a reviewer too and just send you lots of love. And then you'll feel like reviewer two is not so scary. Um, yeah, it's really, really helped me. And I think for me, I'm in an interdisciplinary studies PhD in North America, where the first two years are usually coursework, comps, PhD. And my program has no coursework requirements, no other students. I work remotely and live remotely with three children under three and almost four, uh, two-year-old twins and a three-year-old. So life is hard. My, my partner is actually on this Zoom as well because he wanted to co-plan and do it as a family. So that's exciting. I hope he got something out of it. He's in the what, other what's room. What's his name, Ella? What's his name? His name is Phelan. I just there at the bottom. <laughs> Hello, Phelan. Do you want to, can you demute de de as well, Phelan? Just love to just say what a lovely human being you are. We want to do it together. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, what a handsome man. Do I see, is that gym equipment? Is that gym equipment around you? No, it's a, it's a light. <laughs> oh, that's but really, he, so I can, he does have so a kinesiology degree. Oh, well. I must have picked up on it. Fayla, can I just say thank you so much to the pair of you because I just feel like you're sort of now in the family as well, but planning together. So... Ella, talk us through that. Phelan can come in. So we see movement on your whiteboard. Could you move your whiteboard three, four inches just so we can see a little bit about what's happening? It's more here. Oh, great. Right. <laughs> the big um, the paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think where, I, where I'm at, and I fail, and I hope it's okay to speak for you too, because we're running out of time, so I'll no, be quick. Plenty of time. Plenty of time, please. Okay, okay, good. Um, So I'm holding this paradox that I've read a lot of your things and watched your videos, and I've listened to all of you, and I know that Basically, you need calculated ambition is what I've always called it. You work backwards from the goal, the marathon. And I feel really good about that. But I'm working in a field which is exploring um, how our minds have been colonized, colonized and we need to learn to better hold discomfort in order to be able to have the tough conversations about global wicked issues and move through that. So it's a combination of trauma, mental health, education, and decolonial studies. Yes. And the people I, I've been engaging with are saying, it's just a cacophony now, a sea of opinions. Why bother sticking with a discipline? Why bother publishing when nobody really reads it? You know, like keep the, the dissertation as a hoop, as your job and do all your other work on the side and, and use the space to do the work, but don't put it into your PhD because it can be weaponized. And so I'm holding that complicated paradox of trying to stay the path of planning, but my topic is is unique. And for both Phelan and I, when we make plans to move together, that imposter syndrome of there's too many ideas and then we both just freeze and we're like, what do we do next? So those are kind of the two spaces we're in. Right, so I think the pair of you firstly, how inspiring to meet these two remarkable people before Christmas. I'm almost like weeping uncontrollably here. So Ella, you are both where you need to be. We are privileged to be of service to you today because you're of service to the planet. Now, what I would say to you is, it, and I suppose all my life, Ella, I've had all these people tell me, oh, it doesn't make any difference. It's not what you do, don't care. You know, it's just rubbish. Humanities and social sciences, who cares? Pick, you know, pick something. You know, I'm a, a, a white working class Australian woman. You know, I'm, I'm the exact inverse of a triple threat, right? Okay, so I'm nobody, I'm absolutely nobody. But I believe not in myself, I have no interest in personal ambition at all, but I believe that the citizens of this planet deserve the right and the chance to experience the best of ideas rather than the worst, and that we need to be the change that we need to see, right? And so therefore, what I want you to do for me, for all of us, for the planet, is I need you to sit in your power, Ella, I need you to have that whiteboard and I need you both to edit it together because what I want for you a little bit differently from Jess, I want what's on your whiteboard to pretty well be the directive of your year, okay? So I want you with all those wonderful children, we need you as a family to commit to 
let's say four publications of some kind. Let's just go for four with you. Let's not have the universe have the have the second have the second column if you like of the of the fun and games. But I want for you, beautiful Ella, I want four. And I think the family and all that you're going through, you can commit to four and I'll help you send me stuff. I'll, let's commit to four. And as a family, let's get those four moving down the whiteboard, okay? And you're doing an amazing topic. It is so incredibly important. And don't let anybody take that dream off you to make change, okay? You are where you need to be now and we are lucky to know you. Okay. Thank you. I have tears. <laughs> Thank and, you. And we are lucky to know you, but believe, Angel, believe, okay? You are important. The family is important. The work is important. The work has value in and of itself. So share it with us. That's what we do at night, Phelan and I. We have a long day and then we go, this is the work. This is the work. You are both amazing people and colleagues. That's really where we end today. Shay, I don't about you, I'm crying. I started this gig crying. I finished crying. Can I just say to everybody, you know, we've got a few days before Christmas and multiple holidays at this period of time. I thank you for sparing the time with us today. I feel changed. I feel moved. And I think I'm now ready for next year. So I thank you all. And let's Keep in touch with every single person on this call. You are all spectacular people and tough times, tough world, but together, one article at a time, one reader at a time, we can make that change. So I thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you, for Tara, for being who you are. Um, it's really life-changing sometimes, a moment like this, and uh, what you said to Ella is true for everybody and what you said to me is the same as in you know don't hold back and so it's it's just I'm I'm quite teary myself it's pretty big um I did not know this was where this was going <laughs> so I, I didn't either and can I just say who knew a whiteboard could create such emotion <laughs> that a piece of stationery could be so transformative. Colleagues, thank you for the time. My love to you, your family, your friends, and see you on the other side. You are loved, you are cared for. Go and change the world. Rock and roll team, see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. You're the thank best. you. You're thank the best. you.